Welcome back. I hope you're having a nice day. I want to begin the video by saying that if you like the content, please like and subscribe, as I will post these videos on a weekly basis. So let's begin. In my last video, I talked about central bank digital currencies, and I showed how this might affect cryptocurrencies. Today, I will talk about the economics of cryptocurrencies. So what is a cryptocurrency? In short, a cryptocurrency is a digital or virtual currency that is secured by cryptography, which makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit or double spend. Many cryptocurrencies are decentralized networks based on blockchain technology, which is a distributed ledger enforced by a disparate network of computers. What? So how is the price determined? Just like almost every asset with the help of a market. Simple supply and demand. Let's take the most known cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, for example. There are 21 million Bitcoins, which can be mined in total. At the moment, almost 19 million of those 21 million are already mined. This would suggest that when demand keeps up, it will eventually lead to a rising Bitcoin price, as supply is fixed in capacity. Simply said, Bitcoin is a scarce asset, but therefore it does not have to automatically increase in price. Gold is also scarce, but has lacked the bull run of Bitcoin significantly. The point is, it's all about supply and demand. When demand and supply are in equilibrium, we get to the price, which is around 49k at the moment. So does a cryptocurrency benefit the economy? In essence, yes and no. You see, cryptocurrencies are a form of transactions, and some people claim it to be a store of value. But we know crypto does not produce goods or services, Therefore, it does not increase GDP, which is often referred to as the most important measure for economic growth. Also, because crypto is decentralized and there are some anonymous privacy coins like Zcash, it stimulates the use for illegal activities like anti-money laundering. These private transactions are not recorded and will never see the daylight. Therefore, real registered economic activity is lower, and this makes it harder for governments to estimate economic indicators. However, multiple articles as of lately show that the criminal use of all cryptocurrency activity is decreasing and is even less than 1%. But we can tell with certainty. Another point of criticism is the use of energy for mining, which is an externality. I will talk about this more later on. But you can wonder whether this energy usage should be used for producing real goods and services. On the other hand, nowadays many companies and banks accept Bitcoin as a form of payment which stimulates the sales of products and services of these companies and banks, which might not have taken place otherwise. This increases the profits of these businesses and consequently, if transferred to fiat currency, could incentivize investment in the economy. Now, maybe this is a bit far-fetched, but we simply cannot deny the fact that crypto boosts economic activity at the moment. The question is whether this still will be the case when crypto has a lower valuation. So, do cryptocurrencies increase welfare? This is quite a tricky question, because welfare has multiple definitions, but let's assume it's somewhat in line with the state of doing well in happiness, well-being or prosperity. It makes sense that when crypto valuations are high, the welfare increases of people who are invested in it, and when valuations are low, it's the other way around. But I think it's more of an individual perception. If you simply buy cryptocurrencies because you want to make a profit, your welfare will probably be lower than when you truly believe in it and you gain utility from the fact of being an owner of a digital token, regardless of the price. Now, a paper from Chiu et al. from 2019 estimates that Bitcoin generates a large welfare loss that is about 500 times as large as a monetary economy with 2% inflation. This is because they state that the Bitcoin design is very inefficient due to mining costs. I quote, this translates into people being willing to accept a cash system with an inflation rate of 230% before being better off using Bitcoin as a means of payment. I will leave a link to the paper in the description, but again, it depends on the definition of welfare and on whether you look at individual or social welfare. Also, there are of course more cryptocurrencies which are more efficient. And at last, is the mining of cryptocurrency bad for the environment? Now, a recent tweet of Elon Musk about Bitcoin being environmentally harmful led to the price of Bitcoin dropping with more than 10%. He talks about the rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels, like coal, for mining and transactions. The dubious environmental issue of cryptocurrency has been around for years, 
And although it's true that as of lately it has become increasingly worse, it is quite remarkable that out of nowhere it's an issue. More coincidentally, two weeks before this tweet, he sold 10% of his Bitcoin to prove liquidity. In general, it is almost impossible to state what the effect is of mining cryptocurrencies on the environment. The Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance CCAF, states that Bitcoin consumes 0.55% of global electricity production. Another paper from 2018 from the Oak Ridge Institute in Ohio found that $1 worth of Bitcoin took more than double the amount of energy it took to mine $1 worth of copper, gold and platinum. So numbers of energy usage vary a lot, if it's even reliable and unbiased. Now the argument goes that a lot of miners use renewable energy, but these numbers also vary a lot. A study in 2019, for example, says 73% is renewable energy, which is consistent with many people estimating it being around 75%. But according to a survey again by the CCAF, only 39% of Bitcoin is driven by renewable energy. We will probably never know the exact numbers, but it's definitely an issue. And with the increasing popularity of crypto, miners and investors will have to come up with solutions like alternative coins, which are less polluting. Thank you so much for listening. Looking at cryptocurrencies from an economic perspective is quite challenging, but I hope you learned something today and I wonder what you think about the economic perspective of cryptocurrencies. I hope to see you soon. Bye.